If you've ever tried to build a helmet for your costume, you probably know that they are one of the most difficult things to pattern. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you a super simple and clean way to make a super nice template for your next cosplay helmet. <music> Greetings there, fellow makers. Welcome to the shop, I'm Bill, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make a super simple and effective helmet basic template pattern thing, just like this. Of course, the basics of this technique I learned from my buddy Evil Ted. If you're not following him, go on over and subscribe to his channel. He's amazing, he's got a great series on building a foam helmet. I based my pattern and technique on his, but I've added a little bit to mine. I've got some extra stuff that I like to do with my templates that you're gonna wanna see. So what are we waiting for? Let's get to it. I've started with a life casting of my head, or rather my twin brother's head. What a handsome fella. If you don't have a head casting, they can be purchased online in something similar to your own head dimensions, or you can check out the life casting video that we did a while back. Get some friends together and build yourself a wonderful copy of your noggin. To get started, I covered my head in aluminum foil to create a form-fitting barrier between the next layer of tape and the head. That next layer was done in duct tape. I covered as much of the head as I needed to have covered by the helmet. Then I plotted out the midline from my nose all the way to the back of the neck. Since this helmet was going to be symmetrical, I only needed to draw out one side. After that, I drew the outlines for my helmet form. This was just a quick design from my own imagination, but you could pattern out whatever helmet you're trying to replicate. I also tried my best to figure out the best placement for the seams. In this case, I cut the side panels completely in half instead of using simple darts. It seemed to make sense for this design. This is a step that you could totally spend a lot of time doing some experimentation with. Once I had my seams figured out, I first drew on a bunch of registration marks along those seams, then I cut the pattern off the head slowly and carefully with an X-Acto knife. The liberated pattern was then cut apart along all of those seams with a pair of scissors. The resulting pattern is a little bit ugly, but don't you worry, we're going to tidy that up. Hey gang, I just wanted to take a quick moment to remind the new folks about all of the wonderful books that we have available in our store. Last week, I gave away my first ebook, The Beginner's Guide to Making Mind-Blowing Props, but on our store, we have a bunch more other books for sale, including things like both Foam Smith books in ebook and printed versions, plus we have books in ebook form from some of our other friends like Vulpin Props, Kamui Cosplay, and WM Armory. There is a mountain of knowledge waiting for you over at punishprops.com, so head on over there and check out what we have in store. Okay, let's get back to the build. The next step was to get my ugly pattern into my computer. I did so by simply taking a photo of the pattern pieces with my cell phone, but I did it over my ruled cutting mat, and I tried to keep the photo as square to the mat as possible. That photo was then sent to my computer and then I dragged it into Inkscape. This is a free vector drawing application. I scaled my document properties to the dimensions of the cutting mat in the photo so that my drawn patterns would be the correct size. Then I drew my pattern lines on top of the photo tracing the rough duct tape pattern. I tried to make my new lines with as few vertices as possible. I wanted these lines to be as smooth as I could make them. I've also made dozens of patterns like this, so I know where to fudge the pattern a little bit to get a better outcome. Don't worry, you'll get it with some practice. To finish the pattern, I tweaked the seam on the back of the helmet so that it would curve a little bit away from my neck. Changes like this can be exaggerated to fit your needs. I made sure to trace over my registration marks and also to include some letters to identify which seam lines line up with one another. Finally, and this is important, I selected all of my nice shiny new pattern lines and scaled them up in all directions uniformly by 10%. This will account for the thickness of the foam and give your noggin some room to squeeze inside of that helmet. Now I needed to print these patterns out, so I created a new Inkscape document and I set its properties to the same dimensions as my printer. In this case, I went with a letter-sized print. Then I copied and pasted my drawings into this new document 
and started moving the placement of the pieces so that they would fit onto two printed pages. The longer part proved to be too long for just one piece of paper, so I made a center line for that one and included half of it on either page to be assembled after printing. Then I printed out my template on some heavy cardstock paper. The pattern was cut out and the longer piece was taped together to complete my template. Remember to cut some little triangles in for those registration marks. This will make lining up your seams much easier later on when you're gluing your foam together. All I had to do now, of course, was to cut on my helmet and glue it together. Remember too that this was just half of the helmet, so I made sure to trace out my pattern twice, flipping each piece over and labeling it accordingly, left and right. The foam, of course, at this point could be cut out with a knife, but since I'm spoiled, I trimmed up all of my pieces using my handy dandy fan saw. My pieces were then warmed up a little bit with a heat gun to preform them by hand and get them ready for the glue up. I went with my favorite contact cement barge to goo up all of the seam edges. This is definitely worth taking the time on. I usually end up putting a couple of good layers on seams like this where I want it to hold super nice. Oh yes, also be sure to use a proper respirator and work in a well-ventilated area. Barge and most contact cements are super toxic. Once the glue was set up, I started slowly and carefully pressing all of the seams together. I started with the side panels and then attached those to the longer strip that runs down the middle of the head. I did this for each side of the helmet and then I pressed the two halves of the helmet together forming a finished helmet shape. And that'll do it. That's one basic helmet form ready for some additional detail and embellishments. Boom, Bob never looks so good. Once you're at this stage, you can start tweaking and changing your pattern to get it nice and detailed the way that you want it. If you want to change the form at all, you could even start trimming on the finished helmet part and then getting it perfect and nice uh, usually that ends up mangling all the foam, so you could cut it apart along the seams, trace that again, and make a new updated template. It's all about trial and error to get it exactly how you want it. Also remember too, before you get to the foam stage and you're in Inkscape, you can tweak those seams a little bit uh, once you kind of get a knack for how uh, seams come together and what sort of forms they make. Uh, you'll start to learn how to do that stuff freeform and get it to turn out exactly the way you want it. Of course, if this is one of the first times you're making a helmet, don't get too discouraged if it doesn't come out exactly the way you want it. There is a real knack to this sort of stuff and you're only gonna get it with more and more practice, so keep at it. There are, of course, a ton of other ways to pattern out your helmet pieces. I did a an insulation foam sculpt and made a pattern off of that for my mechanist helmet. That worked out really well. If you've got a head that you want to work from but you want to bulk it out a little bit, you could sort of tape and mash on some crumpled up paper or some aluminum foil to sort of half sculpt it and then pull a pattern off of that. So keep trying and practicing new techniques until you get exactly the helmet you want. Of course, if you like this helmet, this sort of basic template here, if you'd like to grab that guy, that's available in my store now for just a couple of bucks. This is a good form to start on if you want just a basic helmet shape. Links to that and of course all of the tools and materials that I used in this video can be found down below. Thank you guys so much for checking out the video and I hope you learned something new today. And of course, thanks to Evil Ted for knocking it out of the park with that original really awesome foam helmet tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments and of course, if you have a cool helmet project that you're working on, let me know in the comments. I love to see the things you guys are working on. That's it, that's all I have for today. Thanks again so much and I'll see you all in the next build. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.